This past weekend, a video went viral and it shocked conservatives. It showed Black Lives Matter protesters shutting down a major thoroughfare. And when a man got out angry, demanding these people move and confronted him, the police came to the defense of those breaking the law. A lot of people were shocked. Why would the cop allow them to do this? Now, recently, we've seen many states pass anti-riot laws, and the media claims they're anti-protest laws. Many of these states are upping the criminal penalty for blocking streets, my opinion. Well, in Florida, they made it a felony. I don't think it should be a felony. I think it should just be enforced, but it's not being enforced. Therein lies the big problem. Even when the police do arrest Antifa, the DAs cut them loose. And now we are seeing many more instances where the police won't even arrest those breaking the law. In fact, they will defend them. It happened in Portland. It happened now to the shock of many conservatives in Texas of all places. There's another viral video that was really making people kind of angry. It showed more Black Lives Matter Antifa leftists, this time in, I believe it was Portland, blocking streets and patrolling with rifles. And when a man demanded they move, they drew down on him. He drew his weapon. They beat him, injured him, damaged a couple of his vertebrae. This man is, look, the, the, the people are not being arrested who did this. And again, we're learning that the majority of those who were arrested during the riots were cut loose. It's interesting that conservatives have been very much supporting of police, believing in the institution. But because at the political level, Democrats are in control of the prosecution and many of these local governments. What's happening is cops arrest people. They say, oh, we're being neutral. And then it's conservatives who end up going to jail. A story came out recently that many of those arrested in Washington, D.C. for the Capitol riot are in solitary confinement, facing cruel and unusual punishment or being given massive bail numbers they can't possibly pay. Meanwhile, across the country, for a variety of reasons, Antifa being cut loose. I suppose the most shocking instance or the circumstance is that we are now seeing this story out of Texas viewed more than one million times. And it's probably because people are starting to realize people on the right, the cops won't even arrest the Antifa types. And I said this would happen. How many times now? Eventually, we'll come to a point where we will see Black Lives Matter or Antifa or other far left groups protesting at your own home. And if you try in any way to defend yourself, the police will come and arrest you and will eventually get to the point where the cops just arrest you outright. Why? It's easier to arrest one person than a mob. Just take a look at what's happening in many of these other countries. In Canada, for instance, a pastor has has been arrested. In the UK, they barred people from hugging and kissing, and the cops have no problem arresting you. There was another viral video where a man gave a hug to a person, just I, be, I believe this was last year, and the cops actually arrested this person. I think, it's, I think it's fair to say we do need law enforcement. But when law enforcement is corrupted and can't discern between those breaking the law and those abiding by their First Amendment rights and Second Amendment rights, we have a very serious problem. And that problem is conservatives defending police who are putting them in prison and protecting the far left. At this point, When we've seen so many cops resign from their departments, I think it's fair to say that the majority of the good cops have already left. And what's left is going to be bad cops who will do whatever the political, the the politician's whims are. And that means if you're a conservative and you view yourself as a second class citizen, as many conservatives have said, don't be surprised when the cops come and arrest you too. But let's take a look at these stories and I'll show you. As crime is skyrocketing, what's the FBI focused on? Cyber attacks, shutting down gas pipelines? No, 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 no. (laughs) Hate crimes. Garage pull ropes. I'm not kidding. Here's the story from Newsweek. Video of a man confronting Black Lives Matter protesters at Texas intersection viewed over one million times. Maybe now we're seeing conservatives finally realize what's happening. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com. Click that big old members only button and you can sign up to become a member to help support my work in the event we get suspended or banned because it's entirely possible. But more importantly, because we have members only content in the members area that you can only get on TimCast.com. And we did this because as time goes on, there are things I'm not allowed to say on YouTube because they will ban my channel and they will shut us down. We've already received a warning because we had Alex Jones on the TimCast IRL podcast. Well, Instead of just sitting back and saying, we will not 
tell the truth. No, no, we're going to do everything we can to keep speaking on YouTube, but we're going to make sure we have stuff on TimCast.com so that we can actually talk about what's going on and bring you the truth. We're going to be expanding. We're adding a newsroom. We're doing more shows. We're going to do fiction content, scripted content. So please become a member. But don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's read the story from Newsweek. They say, a video of a man furiously confronting Black Lives Matter protesters in an intersection in Plano, Texas earlier this week has been viewed more than one million times. The video was taken during a protest on May 2nd to honor the life of Marvin Scott III, a 26-year-old black man who died in March while in police custody at a Texas jail. Last week, Scott's death was officially ruled a homicide. Now, again, for those that aren't familiar, that just means his death was the result of human action. Protesters on Sunday marched through Plano and Frisco, Texas, and at one point, some demonstrators stalled traffic while heading toward a Chick-fil-A parking lot, the Dallas Observer reported. At that time, video footage captured a tall white man storming at protesters while screaming obscenities. The man can be heard yelling, get the F out of my way, repeatedly at groups of protesters. He could also be seen approaching a younger black woman and swatting her phone out of her hand while screaming, get out of here. Now, I can say this right away. Don't do that. This guy should not be getting up in people's faces and swatting their hands, you know, their phones or shoving people. But where were the police? Where were anyone else? Where where was anyone else who would stand up and demand these people move? Nowhere to be found. Just this one guy. They go on to say during the altercation, civil rights attorney Lee Merritt, a representative for the Scott family who was present during the demonstrations, can be seen calmly approaching the man, according to the Dallas Observer. In response, the man angrily shoved Merritt and put up his fists as if he was about to strike him. An officer present on the scene then stepped in to usher the man away. Meanwhile, the man could be heard cursing and pleading with the officer to get the protesters out of the road before finally leaving the scene. The man can be seen pointing at several demonstrators and screaming, you're an a-hole repeatedly. By Saturday, the video was viewed more than 1.1 million times. Now, what do you think the response from the left was? Outrage. Why? Why, did the, why didn't the police arrest this man? Well, I don't know. I mean, aren't you guys protesting the police? Why should they? But then the right has another question. Why didn't this officer clear the streets and allow people to carry on with their lives? You don't know what these people have to do. There could be medical emergencies. There could be family emergencies. For all we know, this guy's mom was in the hospital. No idea. I mean, we are still in a pandemic, right? Why didn't the cop do anything? Because why would he? At this point, the cops have left. At this point, these people know they can act with impunity and no one will do anything to stop them. Because even in, I I believe it was Portland, when you had a guy confess to assaulting a federal officer, the charges were dropped. They say, Hava Johnston, a community advocate who was present during the altercation, told the Dallas Observer that she believes police treated the man favorably because he was white. The question is, why wasn't that guy treated the same way that a person of color would have been treated? You mean protesters who are openly breaking the law and have no penalties. Even when I said out of Florida that blocking a street shouldn't be a felony, I said they should be immediately arrested. Just not a felony charge. But that means if someone blocks the road, congratulations, that's civil disobedience. You get arrested for it. You get charged for it. In this instance, no, no, the cop told the guy to back off. The following day, a Twitter account called Official Justice for Marvin criticized the officer and noted that he never reached for his taser or weapon. Is that what they wanted? Yes, because they want to use the police for their own power. And they already have the political institutions and conservatives. Many of them, not all, have been cheering on the cops. Now, I will say what's interesting is to see so many conservatives respond to this. It seems the tide may be turning. Conservatives may be saying now, you know what? Why support the cops? I'd rather have the right to keep and bear arms. Isn't that preferable to this? Quote, ask him if a six foot five, 275, 275 pound black man had approached a group of white women, children and men. If that man would be alive right now, the tweet read, he would be. You are the agitators, those in the street blocking traffic and the cops didn't do anything about it. Newsweek contacted the Plano Police Department for an additional comment, but they did not hear back in time for publication. Over the past week, protesters have been staging nightly sit-ins at the county jail where Scott was killed, while other demonstrators have been taking to the streets to demand the arrest of eight officers involved in his death. And you know what? I don't know about Texas, but maybe these officers will actually get charged. And at this point, you know what? I have very little sympathy. 
We see what's happening across this country. If you're a cop, now I'll tell you what, what, what's, this is the escalation right here. Fox 12, Oregon. Man says crowd of Portland marchers surrounded him, assaulted him. Joe Hall has a long recovery ahead. He says, quote, I have a partially collapsed left lung, two lower vertebrae fractured on top of five broken ribs, a broken collarbone and head trauma. Hall spoke to Fox 12 from his legacy Emanuel hospital bed. He says he doesn't regret anything he did. I stood my ground and I would do it all over again. The Portland Police Bureau got several calls Thursday, shortly after 12 p.m., about the group, which was making its way through North Portland with JFPK signs and drums. Witnesses reported seeing people in the crowd openly carrying firearms and wearing tactical gear. I always stress they are within their legal right to carry those firearms. Hall, who is a local handyman and was driving his pickup through the area, said he got stopped by the crowd in the street and other vehicles that were blocking his way along North Alberta near Michigan Avenue. All of a sudden, these agitators come out screaming, pounding on my truck. After trying to drive around the group, Hall said he stopped and got out, got out of his pickup truck because he thought he hit something. By this time, I've got five people surrounding my vehicle, AR-15s, AK-47s. According to Hall, people in the group were calling him derogatory racially charged names and pointing weapons at him while his truck door was open. Hall said someone took his keys and a less lethal firearm, so he grabbed his pistol. I pulled my 38 out of my right pocket and pointed it at the group and to- pointed it at the ground, sorry, and told them if a weapon points at me again, I will shoot to eliminate the threat. Hall told Fox 12 he is a disabled veteran who served in the Marine Corps and Army Reserves. Hall said shortly after he was showed, shortly after he showed he had a pistol, somebody tackled him to the ground and took the gun. Hall said people started kicking and hitting him. Video posted to social media show the event unfolding with posters praising the crowd members disarming of the man in captions and comments. A neighbor who spoke to Fox 12 said she saw part of the scuffle from her window. It looked like he was face down and and then people were kneeling on top of him. Hall said he thought he was going to die and wants to know why Portland police didn't intervene after receiving other calls about the group. A driver near Interstate Avenue in Killingsworth reported the crowd smashed out their back window and slashed their tires. After he recovers from his injuries, Hall says he's picking up and leaving the city. Bravo, good sir, do it. That's the right move. I'm done. I'm done working in Portland. I'm shutting my business down, and I'm probably not going to be coming back. Hall filed a police report for the assault and said he will be pursuing biased crime charges based on what people were shouting at him. Fox 12 reached out to one of the March organizers on Twitter, but did not get a response. PPB, Police Bureau, has not released any updates on the investigation or whether there have been any citations or arrests nor will there be. It's going to keep happening, my friends. This isn't the first time, it won't be the last, that the police actually don't do anything or they're more likely to arrest a conservative. I shouldn't even say conservative. This is a regular guy. Regular guy, a handyman in Portland. Well, I got to say, I respect the guy for standing his ground. I respect the guy for saying he's going to leave. But I have to question why he's there in the first place after a year of people smashing windows and setting fires. Did you think it wouldn't happen to you? How many times have I had to say it? Now, first, maybe he didn't know. I don't expect everybody to know everything. And this may be a regular guy who just watches regular news. And of course, the regular news is not telling people what's really happening. Now he's a regular guy with two broken vertebrae, vertebrae, who is realizing what's happening in his city and is going to be leaving. I'm sad this happened to him, and it's unfortunate these things keep happening. We have this, this video from Bill Malugan. LAPD's Topanga Division station was firebombed Sunday morning at about 1 a.m. A source sent me this video, which shows a suspect throwing a Molotov cocktail against the doors. LAPD tells me officers witnessed it and chased the suspect down, and the suspect is in custody. How much you want to bet this guy? Well, actually, this guy might actually get charged, um, and uh, convicted. Because when these people attack government buildings, it seems to be the only time they actually get in trouble. But not everyone, only the most serious offenders. There was one individual who burned down a police station in Minneapolis. That person was convicted. Several accomplices. Most of the people, however, cut loose. In Portland, even though they were firebombing federal facilities, most of these people were cut loose. Those who were committing the most egregious crimes were the ones who were actually getting charged. I've been, you know, I wouldn't say... 100% gung-ho about abolishing the police. 
But I have been saying abolish the police. And let me let me clarify. I think most of you understand where I'm coming from at this point. Seeing conservatives say, what's the point of having police if they're defending Antifa are starting to realize when the Democrats control the political apparatus, the police will be enforcers of corrupt Democrats. And they've been doing it for some time. While I haven't been on board with defunding the police until somewhat recently, and what I should say somewhat on board with, my attitude is this. If you still live in these cities with the police actually either ignoring or sometimes outright protecting the far left and Antifa and the Black Lives Matter riots, you've been warned and people still voted for this. A lot of people are post, you know, Biden voters are furious. Gas prices are on the rise. The economy's in trouble. We, we got we got a cyber attack on, an, on on the largest oil pipeline in the country. And what is the FBI doing? <laughs> I guess concerned about hate crimes. You know, I saw this article from Fox News, Chicago weekend violence, six killed, including a 13 year old boy, 28 people wounded in shootings. There have been at least 195 murders and 865 shootings year to date, police say. You want to know why I bring this story up? Do you know what will happen if you live in Chicago and decide to purchase a firearm to protect yourself? These cops will arrest you on the spot and they won't care what your excuse is. They won't care what your reason is. Oh, they can't stop the gang violence. They can't stop the riots. But you better believe they will stop you if you try to exercise your Second Amendment right to defend yourself. So at this point, if there are police who either don't care or who are engaging in illegal activities like those who protected Bill de Blasio in New York's illegal paintings or those who would gleefully enforce unconstitutional laws, the smartest thing for any law abiding citizen is to advocate for, for abolishing the police. Not for the reason the left says the leftists think the cops are a, a racist institution that can't be redeemed. Don't care. It's not true, mind you. I've encountered bad cops. I've encountered good cops. And I think for the most part, a, a police department's a good thing. Police helping to keep us safe. When we have problems, we can call we can call them for help. But I do think the big cities have done away with personal responsibility. In New Jersey, for instance, you cannot have a gun for personal protection. Oh, they'll lie and claim you can. But let's be realistic. How do you get a handgun for concealed carry? Or Well, first of all, you can't open carry, period. I could have sworn the Constitution Constitution says keep and bear arms, but sure. But you, in order to get a handgun in New Jersey, you need a qualifying reason. And it's extremely hard to have one. If you say to defend yourself from hate crimes, they will laugh in your face. Not literally, figuratively, they will. You can't get one. It's hard enough to actually get qualified for a single handgun purchase to keep in your own home stored safely. It's hard enough to get qualified to even buy long guns. Hard enough, I should say, more like time consuming and tedious. And for people who have full time jobs, it's pretty hard. Take a look at this from New Jersey 101.5. FBI in New Jersey cracking down after rise in hate crimes in 2020. All right. Well, hate crimes are bad. I'm glad that law enforcement takes people committing crimes seriously. But for real, there's a rise in hate crimes. OK, here's my solution. Um, who are the, who are the victims? Are the victims? Uh, is it is it Latinos, Asians, black people? Is it is, OK, black and Asian? OK, the data shows attacks against black and Asian residents increase significantly. All right. Here's my solution. Give them guns. Oh, but you can't. You see the problem here? Now, I know that most people don't care for the FBI at this point. Democrats apparently love the FBI, which is hilarious. But we're talking about law enforcement in general. I don't think the FBI is going to go around arresting someone for just having a gun. That's if it's federal, it's going to be the ATF. But New, Z New Jersey police will. So you mean to tell me that people in New Jersey can read the news about how there are hate crimes against them based on their race and they cannot go and get a gun to protect themselves? Are we worried about hate crimes happening with people breaking into our houses? No, we're worried about black and Asian people walking down the street, minding their own business and someone attacking them based on their race. But you cannot keep and bear arms without a qualifying reason for a concealed carry, let alone a long gun that you can't that that's just outright illegal. And then even in your home in New Jersey, if someone breaks in, you have a duty to retreat. Who's going to arrest you if you stand your ground? The police. At this point in the big cities, the criminals are getting more protection than law abiding citizens. Small business owners don't even play. Maryland COVID-19 squad investigates quarantine breakers. And yes, they can arrest you. 
Maryland man gets year in jail for hosting parties violating COVID-19 crowd restrictions. I've covered these stories before, but we have a First Amendment right to peace, peaceably assemble. I don't care for what reason. The Constitution doesn't say for, for parties and libations. It doesn't say only for political reasons. It says peaceably assemble. But the police still go and arrest law abiding citizens. The police still go and take away their right to defend themselves. Now, for a while, I defended the police department. Remember that? My reasons aren't the same as the anarchist or libertarian reasons for saying we should abolish the police. Mine are different. We had an election. We said, stop the riots, please. They voted. Portland voted. New York voted. Maryland voted. They voted to support those who defended the extremists. And as time goes on, we can see that the cops have become irrelevant in the political discourse. I'm I'm talking about policy wise. So people say to me, Tim, don't blame the cops. It's the district attorneys who are doing this. No, no, I blame the person who took the action. If you're a cop at this point, you know that if you arrest someone and they're a leftist, they're getting cut loose. And if you arrest someone and they're a regular law abiding, regular working class American, small business owner, conservative, moderate, you know, they will get the book thrown at them. So why do it? That's the choice they made. The police make the choice. OK, let's take the person, the, the personable, the personal out of the equation. I don't care if the cop is a good cop or a bad cop. Let's just talk math, as I've stated last week and I'll state it again over a long enough period of time with conservatives and moderates getting the book thrown at them and leftists being released. You will have leftists doing whatever they want. Conservatives sitting in jail for those that are getting felony charges for, say, having a party or going to church or whatever, or defending themselves with a firearm, you can't vote anymore. Isn't that funny how it works out? So I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is a warning to the conservatives. So long as Democrats control, control these departments, the good cops are resigning. Do you really think now is the time to defend the cops who will lock you up without question? You're free to do so. Don't take it from me. These are just my thoughts and my opinions. And if you disagree, by all means, you're allowed to. A lot of conservatives said that I got schooled when I debated a conservative about uh, on our podcast about why we shouldn't have cops anymore. And I'm like, you look at New York City. These cops are going after small business owners. They're going after churches. They're going after synagogues. They're going after people who want to go to church to praise the Lord, as is their God given right to do so. The First Amendment constrains the government. But it didn't matter to these cops. It didn't matter to them when they chained up the, uh, the uh, playground in a Jewish neighborhood. It didn't matter to them when they shut down churches or arrested people for having parties, which they did. It doesn't matter to them when people get guns to protect themselves. It doesn't matter to them. Don't support those cops. You want to preserve the legacy of the policing institutions and those who actually drive full speed into danger to save lives. I respect that and I respect those people. We're at a point now where you can't even defend yourself in these cities. And the left is getting away with it. The, the Black Lives Matter riots are getting away with it. Let's take a look at Canada. Take a look at these places where there's no constitution. This story is from just the other day. Canadian pastor whose Easter confrontation police went viral, arrested after holding church service. Calgary pastor Artur Pulowski is charged with organizing an illegal in-person gathering. You want to know what's funny? People keep talking about the Constitution in this country. They talk about how it's so great we got a Constitution and it's, it's, it's so unfortunate Canada and the UK don't have that. Really? Here's, a fa- here's one of my favorites. The New York Times reports hugging and kissing in England could be government approved starting next Monday after a year of nodding, waving and bumping fists or elbows. I just put LOL. Funny. Constitution. UK and Canada ain't got one. Okay. People are still getting arrested in violation of the Constitution. Fat load of good the Constitution is doing any of us when conservatives defend the institutions that openly violate the Constitution. Now, let's be real. Let's go back to that first story. A bunch of people peaceably assembling, but in violation of the law. Let's talk about interpreting the First Amendment and being reasonable people. Should these people who are blocking the street be physically harmed? No, they shouldn't. Should they be arrested? Yes, they should. Peaceably assemble does not mean openly break the law without consequence. 
They have a right to peaceably assemble. They don't have a right to break the law. Peaceably assembling. We can look back at the writings of many founding fathers. Had a lot more to do with the Continental Congress. It had a lot to do with people meeting for rallies to discuss. They didn't want their gatherings broken up by the government because they were opposing the government. They wanted the press to be able to report. They wanted people to be able to practice their religion. These things should be protected. So you want to engage in nonviolent civil disobedience. You're upping the ante. Now, now you're going to get arrested. You get a slap on the wrist, but you're cleared from the street. Don't do it again. Do it again. Maybe you'll, you'll spend some time in jail. Instead, what we're getting, the left is, given, is being given carte blanche. We saw what happened when those leftists went on the highway. I believe this was in Seattle, in the Seattle area, the Pacific Northwest. And a car who didn't realize the highway was shut down for the extremists swerved, not seeing these people, hitting a couple of them. And that guy is going to prison. That's right. Think about it for two seconds. Here's a guy who doesn't know the ramp, the, the highway's closed and doesn't know why. The city, the police shut down the highway to protect far left extremists who were occupying it instead of just telling them to get off the highway and who got punished. The guy who was driving on, he should have known it was closed and he hit some people. Amazing. You know, the left is in complete support of the police. And if you think that's not true, you are lying to yourself. You say, no, 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 Tim, the left wants to abolish the police. No, no, they don't. They want the police to do what they say which is why they celebrate, which is why they celebrate when the police arrest a man in his own home in Milwaukee, which is why they are demanding the police arrest this guy in Plano, Texas. They say abolish the police. What they really mean is give us control of the police. I'll tell you, when I say abolish the police, I mean outright just dissolve the organization, give everybody a gun. Everybody should defend themselves. This is the route we're going. I tell you the best path forward if you if you are concerned about violence in your neighborhoods is to take responsibility for your safety and protect yourself. I know a lot of people say it's not possible. It's not uh, uh, it's not easy. I didn't say it was going to be easy either. It could be. Well, it will be dangerous and it could be bad. But right now where I'm at in the middle of nowhere, I have a right to defend myself and on, on my own property. I'm on the border between West Virginia and Maryland. So there's there's different distinctions depending on which state you're in. West Virginia, it's your responsibility. Ain't no cops out here. In the Maryland area, right across the border, it's basically the same thing. But there's different laws in Maryland. So you got you to be more careful out there. Are we going to sit back and, and, and cheer on the police department enforcing Democrat edict that breaks the law, changing street names without vote? taking taxpayer money without vote and letting cops just support this? Are we going to sit back as cops allow people to shut down highways and roads? And then what do you say when they go and arrest conservatives? What do you say when they put the, the, the Capitol uh, rioters in solitary confinement? The Capitol right was wrong. These people should be arrested and charged, same as anybody who's going to commit any other crime. But you see the severity and in the, in, in the difference. We, there was even a Capitol police officer who went on CNN condemning all of these all people on the right and in the worst possible way. Now, of course, these people were fighting with cops on, on, on the six. So it's not like they're in agreement with each other. The point is, uh, you're, you're, you're never going to be able to convince me that there is logic behind defending the police at this point. In the UK and Canada, we see that they're willing to just arrest whoever, even if it's just unjust or ethical. In the US, they're doing the same thing, spitting on the Constitution at the same time. OK, fine. I can look at Canada and the UK and say they don't got a Constitution, so don't be surprised. They shouldn't do it anyway. In the US, even with a Constitution, they still arrest people in violation of their constitutional rights. And that's going too far. You don't have an argument about gun rights? Fine. I'm much more absolutist on 2A at this point than I've ever been in my life, notably because of what's been going on. But there, is, there, is still, there are still arguments about... What does it mean to keep and bear arms? And, and what do arms mean? And sure, for me, I think the founding fathers wanted us to be able to run our own militia at a moment's notice, which means have all the guns, have all the ammo. But there are questions about, you know, I guess concealed carry versus open carry. Now, they're real questions because I've talked to some gun owners who say concealed carry is better. Some people say open carry is better. Eh, I don't know. Those are real arguments. Yet still, the cops decide you can't keep and bear arms. You want to know what's the most insane thing is arresting somebody for having a party because it says peaceably assemble. 
The guy wasn't even getting political and the cops still show up and arrest the guy. And it ha- it's happened more than once. You want to defend the police, by all means, go and do it. At this point, my concern is that the left has, has with, with control of the DA's office and the political institutions, this kind of thing will only get worse. I hope this video out of Plano, Texas is a wake up call where a guy simply was saying, get out of the way. And the cops defended the extremists shutting down traffic. That should never be. But this is the place. This is where we're at right now. But I, I did see a lot of conservatives kind of wake up to this. So it is what it is. You know, you know, you know, you know why I'll say that? Because I don't live in these cities anymore. I'm not going to I'm not going to stress about it where I live. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about riots. I'm not worried about, you know, cops arresting me if I defend my own property. I'm all right. If you want to live in these suburban and urban areas and you're a cop, don't be surprised when you go to prison because you, you know, defended your life. If you're a conservative and you're defending the police, don't be surprised when agents of the state take the side of the state, regardless of what is constitutional or justified. Because when the Democrats get elected, which they did, now you've got law enforcement saying we're neutral but our bosses are Democrats. All right, well, do what you got to do. Support what you want to support. Don't take my word for it if you don't want to. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.